Hi, my name is Julianne Cost, and in the next few minutes, we're going to be taking a look at the Libraries panel in Photoshop CC. If you're not already familiar with the Libraries panel, it's a powerful way to store assets such as graphics and layer styles, colors and character styles, and even brushes so that you can quickly apply them across multiple documents and even across multiple installs using the same Adobe ID. You can even share them with other people and collaborate with others as well as share links. You can create as many libraries as you need in order to help organize your commonly used assets for different projects. So let's start by creating a new library and see what types of assets can be stored. In the Libraries panel, I'll use the drop-down menu and then select Create New Library. And we can give this a name. I'll call it Japan Graphic. And then go ahead and click Create. Now in order to add assets like the foreground color, all I need to do is click on the color swatch down here at the bottom of the Libraries panel. If I ever wanted to change that color, I can double click inside of it and then use the color picker in order to change the color. I can also change the name of it if I want to by double clicking on the name and then typing in maybe a more common name just like red. Now by default, we're going to be looking at the icon view, but I can also switch to list view if I prefer. For now, we'll stick with the icon view. In addition, if you're using the Adobe Capture app, you can save color themes and you can actually load those color themes into your libraries as well. Now I can also add character styles. And probably the easiest way to do this is to just go ahead and create your type layer and set up or assign to it all of those character attributes that you want. So in this case, if we look at the Layers panel, I already have a type layer here. And if I want to store the font and the color and the size and the tracking and the letting, all I need to do is click on the A icon in order to add this character style. Now that's very different from actually dragging the type from the image area into the library's panel, which would create a graphic, which we'll get to in just a minute. Right now, I just wanted to save the character styles. Now, if I wanted to save a layer style or layer effect, again, the easiest way to do that would be to go ahead and create a layer and apply that effect, and then simply select the layer. In this case, it has the drop shadow effect applied to it, and then click the effects icon in order to add it to the library. Now we can also add our graphics to the Libraries panel. And in previous versions, you had to drag from your Layers panel. Now you can drag from either your Layers panel or from within the image itself. In this case, I actually want to drag the entire layer group. So it's probably easier for me to select the layer group in the Layers panel and drag and drop that onto my library. Now let's go ahead and close that file. And I've got this other image that I have open, and I want to add that graphic to this open document. So I'm going to drag and drop this into my image area. And then I can reposition this and go ahead and resize it and scale it if I want to, and then tap Return or Enter in order to apply that. And we can see down here in my Layers panel that this has come in as a linked smart object to Creative Cloud. And there's a little icon of a cloud down there in the thumbnail. All right, let's go ahead and save this file and then close it. Now, back in Photoshop, in the Libraries panel, I'm actually going to make a change to this logo. And I'll do this by double clicking on it, which will open it up in its own window. And in this case, I just want a black and white version of it. So this ellipse layer, the red layer right here, I'm going to select a different foreground color, in this case kind of a lighter gray, and then I'll go ahead and fill that with that light gray. Now let's save this, and we can see as soon as I save it, it's been updated in my Libraries panel. When I close this file and return back to the one that we saved just a moment ago, we can see that it has not been automatically updated because Photoshop's not sure if you want that updated or not. But what it has done is it's given us a little warning here in the Layers panel. And in the Properties panel, we also have a warning. Now if I want to update that, I can right click and then choose Update the Modified Content. And that will go ahead and update it in this document. So you can see how this would be really beneficial if you've got maybe 50 documents that all refer to a single asset and you want to make a change to that asset. Well then every time you open up those other documents, it's very easy to update that modified content. 
Now, you might not always want your assets that are in your library to be linked back to the Creative Cloud. If that's the case, all you need to do is hold down the Option key or the Alt key on Windows when you drag and drop them from the Libraries panel into your image area. Now, there's another kind of asset that Photoshop can store in the Libraries panel, and that is a brush. So if I tap the B key in order to select the Brush tool, and here in the Brushes panel, let's go ahead and make a change to this brush. I'll just change the roundness as well as maybe the angle here. And then in the Brush Presets, let's go ahead and save that as a new preset. Well, then I can save that brush by dragging and dropping a thumbnail of that brush into the Libraries panel. And finally, in the Libraries panel, you can also search Adobe Stock. Right at the top, if you're looking for an asset, we can go ahead and type that in and do a quick search in order to find the images that we need to use for our project. All right, let's go ahead and close this. And I'm going to open up another document. And this document is going to serve as kind of a style sheet for me. So I've already created the document that has a number of different character styles and colors in it. And when I go to open this, you'll notice that I get this like ability to automatically create this style sheet from this document. So I'm going to click Create New Library. And Photoshop will go through and it will find all of the different layer styles, all of the different graphics, all of the different character styles, and all of the different colors that it thinks that I might find useful from this document. So you might not want that dialog box to appear every single time you open a document that has, say, text or colors or things like that in it. So you can actually cancel that one. But then here in the lower left of the Libraries panel, you can click in order to create a library from document there. Or we can use the flyout menu in the upper right in order to create a new library from a document. You'll notice that this flyout is also where we would rename or we would delete any of the libraries that were no longer in use. And it's also where we can collaborate with others and share links. So the difference would be if I was going to choose to collaborate with someone, that means that we all have access to that library. And any changes that any of the collaborators make will be changed throughout everyone's library since they're all synchronizing to the same Creative Cloud library. If I want to share a link, this enables me to create a library, share that link with anyone. They can't add to or delete the library, but they can download it and use those assets in their own projects. If we wanted to, we could also choose to view on website. This is going to show me all of the assets in this library. Of course, we can navigate back, and now I can choose any of the different libraries that I want to see. And finally, don't worry, even if you're not online, you still have access to all of those assets that you have in your Creative Cloud libraries because a local copy is being saved on your computer. And if you make changes to any of those assets, the next time you're online, they'll automatically be synchronized. So there you have it, a quick overview of the Libraries panel in Photoshop CC. My name's Julianne Cost. Thanks for watching.